Dear Princess Sunbutt, Letter 28. Dear Princess Cell Tower, remember that apple and orange thing? Well, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news. I finally figured out how to turn an orange into an apple. The bad news. The apple is screaming now. I'll work out the kinks later. For now, I'm calling this experiment a success. You are mad scientist, Tinkerspell. Letter 28.1 Dear Princess Starfire, the apple is still screaming. Silencing spells don't work on it because it has no mouth. I've got it mostly muffled with some towels inside a locked chest. Anon bravely offered to smash it, but I'm growing a conscience at the most inconvenient time possible. If it's alive, what right do we have to kill it? Would it be a mercy to end its tortured existence? I'm trying my best not to come up with an answer so Anon suffers as long as possible. Your first fruit wizard, but light fuckle. Fruits aren't protected under equestrian law. Even if it's alive, murdering it is 100% legal. Believe me, I triple checked. I just want the screaming to stop. Love Anon. Letter 28.2 Celestia. So, as it turns out, burying the smashed remains of the screaming apple was not a good idea. My bad. There's now a screaming tree on the outskirts of Ponyville. Twilight is getting an axe. Love Anon. Letter 28.3 Celestia. The screaming tree has produced more screaming apples. AJ and her family have rallied together and are defending the tree from harm. Anon. Letter 28.4 Uh, now the Apple Clan is screaming too. Letter 28.5 Help. Letter 28.6 Uh, never mind, uh, we, we, we got it. From Her Royal Highness Starfire, R.E. Apples, 28 through 28.6 To my... no. Dear... no. Uh, Anon, I was in a meeting for three hours, just three hours. I'm pleased that the emergency missive I gave you works and the agents of the Crown likely will beat my response, but just for good measure, I'm on my way. You may inform Twilight she's gonna have to write up the paperwork for yet another banned spell variant. She should have a copy of the forms already, and I'll pick it up when I get there. Celestia. P.S. Funny that you should refer to me as Princess Starfire, considering what I may have to do when I get there. Letter 29 Dear Princess Hot Potato, So today I learned that wild animals are ungrateful shits, even if your party's beast master says otherwise. We found a baby skunk near the stream this morning. Anon came up with a perfectly sensible plan of using a really long net to toss it into the forest. I told him, no, that's a bad idea, because I'm dumb. Instead, I grabbed Stuttercry and made her do something about it. She went all bloodhound and started sniffing around for the shit kitten's mom. Lo and behold, the mom was not happy to have her baby back. For all we know, she left it there on purpose because she couldn't take the stress of being a mother. Flutes and I got sprayed, but it's not entirely bad. I get to rub tomato sauce all over her body now. Your purple roni pizza smells like barfle. Is there not a destinkifying spell? I, I didn't ask Twy because I couldn't stand being near her any longer than absolutely necessary. Love Anon. From Her Royal Highness Hot Potato, RE Letter 29. To my faithful student Twilight Sparkle, Unfortunately, it is true that kindness being paid to others is not always returned immediately, but I am so very proud of you for wishing to return a lost infant to its mother. Animals of more instinct-driven intellect are sometimes driven to, in the case of large litters, or harsh times, abandon the least capable of their young so that they may ensure the survival of others, or if things are considerably bad, themselves. I'm still certain that involving Fluttershy was the correct thing to do, and I know that you desiring to care for such a being likely helped strengthen your friendships. While Anon's idea of perhaps maintaining distance and being careful of the skunk's natural defenses did have a certain merit as per avoiding a tomato-based fate, I once again am pleased that you are able and willing to extend your empathy to a lost kit and to try and find their home. Your loving mentor, Princess Celestia. P. 
P.S. While there is no specific spell to counteract Skunk Musk, there are a variety of herbal remedies a bit more efficacious than tomato juice. I have a few included within. Letter 30 Dear Princess Sunny D, Today I learned that not all changelings have to be killed immediately. Anon found an injured changeling named Stupid while exploring the forest. I wanted to kill it because protocols or whatever, but then I remembered something you once told me. We haven't used the elements on a changeling yet. So, I loaded up the six-part harmony cannon and fired at Stupid. He died. So, now we know what happens when the elements are used on changelings. Another win for science. Your Executioner-in-Chief, Timmy Turner. I found him, so I got to name him. Love and on. From Her Royal Highness Sunny, RE Letter 30. To my faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. The correct protocol for your safety and others is to report changeling activity to the local guard, or turn over a changeling prisoner to same. If you have a reason to doubt the integrity of said guard outpost, it is to be kept bound but safe as possible, and an emergency missive sent to cancer lot. Moreover, I would rather you not become comfortable ending the life of another thinking being Twilight. As for using the elements, I... I admit myself confounded, and a bit disappointed to learn that they were apparently somehow lethal. This, in fact, raises a variety of very concerning questions. I'm glad every pony else is safe and well. Um, I I'll arrange for therapy visits for the other elements. Your loving mentor, Princess Celestia. P.S. You will write me a one-page report on why it is regrettable that an individual, even if it is a changeling, died. Letter 31 Urgent! Read ASAP! Big White! Past the medium blue. Medium blue, no time to explain, I need you to make a squirrel constellation appear underneath the moon before morning. Small purple. From Her Royal Highness Luna, RE Letter 31.1 Dear Twilight Sparkle, While I am pleased to note your enthusiasm for the night sky and your interest in star arrangements, I must admit that this is perhaps one of the more... odd requests I have ever had and I'm actually somewhat relieved that you changed your mind, mostly because I am suspicious of why you have made it. In the future, just request a falling star for whatever clandestine meeting, like every pony else, won't you? At least that way, I don't need to design a new constellation and deal with ponies asking me why a star squirrel is holding up the moon like a giant nut. More importantly, do you really want to be responsible for the potential creation of a new star beast? Your friends, Princess Luna. Letter 31.1 Abort Operation Squirrel Stars! The plan is compromised! Do not show the constellation! Letter 32 Dear Princess Sunday, Today I learned that you shouldn't lecture a vendor on the optimal price of ice cream until after buying the ice cream. Otherwise, you risk being charged double and looking like a pretentious twat waffle. Your six-bit banana split, Twilly Two Scoops. From Her Royal Highness, Sunday, RE Letter 32. To my faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. I... admittedly am not certain what you expected would happen. I choose to remain optimistic. Your strong suggestion was in concern for the other pony, and not merely the desire to be... correct. Your loving mentor, Princess Celestia. Dear Anon, I can tell you're trying to keep her on track at least, so included with this letter is a single serving of my personal blend. It's been fooling ponies into believing I am a morning pony, rather than just THE morning pony, for years. This is on top of your usual payments. Keep up the good work. Penned by Her Royal Highness Celestia. P.S. If Pinkie Pie gets a hold of this and takes even a sip, a single sip, you are personally responsible for all damages, therapy, and violations of reality that ensue. Letter 33 Dear Princess Asseline, Today I learned that I shouldn't try to hang out with a nun and Spike on their bro day. Trademarked. Not only am I a huge nerd, I also lack 
testicles, both of which disqualify me from being bro material. Bro day, trademarked, is a sacred ritual from Anand's homeworld, and I violated several human traditions by attempting to participate without fully understanding its rich culture history and meaning. In the future, I will be more inclined to check myself before I wreck myself. Year one nerd herd, book horse. We sometimes let Dash join. She's got bigger metaphorical balls than anyone I've ever met. Plus, she brings pizza and cider. 200% bro material. Love and on. From Her Royal Highness, Asoline, RE Letter 33. Tier Anon. Normally, I'm able to discern at least some measure of my student's original wording from her letters, but this one strikes me that you wrote it of your own volition. Normally, I would assume Twilight wrote me a missive, denoting how she learned that sometimes friends want to spend time without interference, but she already should have learned that one when the pink one elicited to stop in while Fluttershy was visiting. Of course, if I assume that, then we would have to reset that month timer wouldn't we? On the note of your hopeful outing with my sister, should I inform her of the importance of male reproductive equipment as a qualifier for spending personal time with you? Pens by Her Royal Highness Celestia. <laughs>